Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we'll see a brief introduction and overview of turbulent flow and turbulence modeling. The objective is to provide context that will allow you to better understand the practical aspects of selecting a turbulence model in ANSYS Fluent. Without any further delay, let's get started. A fluid flow that is unsteady, irregular and which exhibits chaotic fluctuations of properties in both space and time is called a turbulent flow. Turbulence is all around us, in all kinds of engineering devices spanning a wide range of applications, aerospace, naval, aerodynamics and combustion systems to name just a few. It's important in geophysical applications like oceanography, meteorology, environmental engineering and also in biological flows. The effects of turbulence determine many important engineering quantities such as heat transfer, frictional drag, flow separation, pressure drop, mixing and others. So it's critical to be able to predict and analyze its effect. In order to determine whether or not a flow is turbulent, we can use the Reynolds number, which takes its name from Osborne Reynolds who performed the famous experiment depicted here on the screen. In the experiment, dye was injected into a pipe with water flowing through it. If the water was moving slowly, the dye just flowed along with the water. This is known as laminar flow. As the speed of the water was increased, the dye began to exhibit fluctuations and as the speed continued to increase, at a certain point, the dye would quickly mix and disperse. This is known as turbulent flow. So in other words, as the speed is gradually increased, the flow undergoes a transition from laminar to turbulent motion. Reynolds found that it's not only the velocity that determines when the flow becomes turbulent. It also depended on the density and viscosity of the fluid and the diameter of the pipe. He combined these into the dimensionless parameter, which is known as the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number doesn't only apply to pipes. The diameter can be replaced with another appropriate length scale, such as the distance from the leading edge of a boundary layer or the cross section of a bluff body. As you can see, turbulence begins at different Reynolds number for different kinds of flows. The important thing to take away from this is that before running a CFD simulation, you should calculate the Reynolds number to see whether your flow is turbulent. Because the overwhelming majority of engineering flows are turbulent, you are almost always going to be simulating a turbulent flow. And there are different ways to do that. In theory, if unlimited computing power and speed were available, you could create an extremely fine grid and directly simulate all of the unsteady turbulent motions responsible for causing the tide to mix and disperse. This is called direct numerical simulation or DNS. But in reality, it's only currently possible for low Reynolds number and simple geometry. The enormous number of grid points and extremely small time step sizes that are necessary make this impractical for any engineering application. As a consequence of this, in order to actually be able to do a turbulent flow simulation, you have to use a turbulence model and different modeling approaches exist. One is called large eddy simulation or LES. A turbulent flow field is made up of small, swirling patterns known as eddies. The idea behind LES is to directly solve for the motion of the largest, most important eddies and model the effect of the smaller eddies. So as the diagram shows, a lot of the detail is resolved, but not all of it. ANSYS Fluent has several LES models and hybrid approaches. But this is still very computationally expensive for most engineering applications so, these aren't going to be covered in this course. That brings us to the most widely used modeling approach, which is known as the Reynolds Average Navier-Stokes Approach, or more simply, RANS. Models based on this approach are called RANS models, and they are far and away the most widely used turbulence models. With RANS modeling, no turbulence is resolved in the simulation. Instead, the mean flow field is calculated and the role of the model is to predict the effect of turbulence on the mean flow field. The diagram shows an illustration of the mean flow field predicted by a RAND simulation. 
there is not as much detail as LES, but for most engineering applications, the mean values are all we are really interested in anyway. Therefore, the rest of the video will focus on RANS models. Next, we will talk about how to select which turbulence model to use in ANSYS Fluent. When you are setting up your CFD simulation in ANSYS Fluent, if your flow is turbulent, you need to go to the model section in the physics tab and click here where it says viscous to open the viscous model panel. The default setting for the viscous model is SSTK Omega model and all the available turbulence models are listed in the panel. Earlier in this video, we talked about RANS models. RANS models solve transport equations for variables that are related to the turbulence. For instance, most of them solve for the turbulent kinetic energy. Anyway, these models are frequently categorized by how many transport equations there are. When you see the panel, all the models with the number of equations listed in parentheses are RANS models. It turns out that many of these models are only used in specialized applications. So right now, we will focus on K epsilon and K omega models, which are the ones used most often in general cases. It's actually useful to think of these in terms of a K epsilon family of models and a K omega family of models. Because as you can see, when you select either of these in the upper left, then you have to select which variation of K epsilon or which variation of K omega you want to use. While there are many possible choices, it's not practical to consider every single choice in every possible flow. Although, if you do want to learn more information about all of the models, advanced turbulence training is available. Anyway, to look at turbulence model selection in a practical light, ANSYS recommends the use of the SSTK Omega model, which is the default. If you experience convergence problems, there are some alternatives listed here. When highly accurate resolution of boundary layers is critical, such as in applications involving flow separation or finely resolved heat transfer profiles on walls, then the SSTK Omega model is the preferred choice. There is one corollary to this recommendation. There can be problems for instance, certain kinds of multiphase problems where the solution depends much more strongly on other physical models or modeling assumptions such that only a crude estimation of turbulence is needed. In such a case, the standard K epsilon model could be used because it's normally the easiest one to converge. Of course, this only applies to some cases, but it can be helpful to remember that Sometimes the turbulence model is not the biggest assumption being made in a CFT simulation. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. We discussed about turbulence and its applications. We learned how to use the Reynolds number to determine whether the flow is turbulent. We then discussed about turbulence models and different modeling approaches with specific emphasis on RANS models. Lastly, we discussed the practical aspects of turbulence model selection in ANSYS Fluent. With that, let's wrap it up.